I, this is for my workshops, and I want to try to look at, for BC people, uh, I want to look at trying to develop the idea of the polynomial that represents a cosine function, and later on we'll go to sine, e to the x, ln x, and probably just mostly cosine here, though, and you can expand on those others in a similar fashion. So what I get the kids to do, and I do this and I lead the whole class, is that I get them to open a Desmos, and I want them to play with Desmos somewhat. And so what we want to do is say, okay, in around zero, we want to go ahead and try to estimate what the cosine graph is. And so already we've done tangent line approximations. So if I do the tangent line right here, that's just going to be y equal to 1. So one way to do this is to say, okay, my p of x could be approximately 1. And so that would be my horizontal line right there, okay? And so then I want to maybe take it to another level and make it come down like this. So then you ask kids, what shape is that? And they, they'll say a parabola, down, upside down parabola. And so you know then that you need to add x squared. Or do you need to subtract x squared? And so these are the types of questions that you ask kids. It's going to open down, so we're going to do that. So we can go to Desmos and put an A in there and then see if we can try to fit it. Now, this won't be perfect as you go along, uh, but you can get an idea. And the kids, a lot of them will, will come up with one half as you go. So on Desmos, all you have to do is put an A in there. When you put an A in there, it will show up and say add slider. So I'm going to go ahead and add slider, and there we go. So now I can try to fit this, and the kids play around with this. They have a lot of fun. See which value might uh, end up being pretty good for that. And some of them will come up with maybe being about 0.5. And so if we do that, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, they'll like that. Okay? So the objective is to get them to play. And then that would look like a pretty good fit. So now you ask the students, okay, I need it to go back up. And so it's going to go back up on either side. So I got to go up like this, and it might not fit perfect, but I need to do that. What kind of equation will open up as such? Well, if you notice, we're doing all even functions. And so this can uh, aid us in writing our equations now for what we had before. So I'm going to take out this, and I'm going to put in a 0.5. And now I'm going to open up, and so it's going to be a positive something x to the fourth. So you can put the a there and see if they can play around with that. They might have to uh, monkey around with the um, calibration of the values that they're going to put in there, but uh, they'll get something that probably works pretty good. And it turns out that it's 1 over 4 factorial. Will they end up with 1 over 4 factorial? Uh, probably not. Uh, some kids might know this a little bit, so they might come up with it. Uh, but no, they probably won't. But what you can do is start taking successive derivatives of this thing and do both sides. And once you do that and you work this one down after a few derivatives, then you'll see that you want the um, cosine value at zero. You'll be back there for the cosine value. And so it will work it out so that if you do the derivatives, bring the 4 down in front, bring the 3 down in front, bring the 2 down in front. As you do successive derivatives, all those 4 factorials will drop out. And so if you kind of have to lead them to this number, you go ahead and do that. And then you say, okay, what's the next term? Well, hopefully they can figure out then that this would be 1 over 6 factorial x to the 6. And if you notice, cosine is an even function. And my polynomials turning out to be an even function as well. And now this becomes plus dot, dot, dot for us. And then you ask them to maybe write the general term. Since it's to the even power, you would have to sort that out. So it would be x to the 2n. And then you need negative 1 as well, raised to a power or in order to do this. Once you get the plus dot, 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 you can change this from approximately to definitely equal to uh, for what we have. So we're alternating. Raise that to the n, and we'll double check if it's n or n plus 1. And then we also have uh, x raised to the 2n. And then we're all dividing by 2n, 
and we're going to group that together factorial. So that this is the first term, second term, third term, that would be my zero term. And then that should work. So if I have zero raised, uh, ne I'm sorry, negative one right here, negative one raised to the n power. If I check this one out, raise it to the first power, I'm going to get the negative here. So that works. And then I have the x to the 2n. That works. And then I'm divided by 2n factorial. And so what did I forget? Well, I have the point 0.5 there. That's the same thing as 2 factorial. This one works as well because I have negative 1 to the 0 power, x to the 0 power, which gives me 1, and then 2n factorial, that would be 0 factorial. That also is defined to be 1. You need that information in order what we, for what we have. Okay, So you should be able to write the polynomial for the cosine x, write the general term, and write all these terms out. The, uh, if you notice, like I said, this is an even function. Notice everything. It's all even. Oh, okay. So if anything, this helps students memorize what these formulas are because they know that cosine is even function. All of these things are going to be even. Now, I would do the same thing uh, for the sine graph. And one other point that I would like to do here, though, is that this right here, I said the tangent line approximation that I started off with would be y equal to 1. For your Taylor polynomials and power series like this, this, uh, whatever your linear part of the polynomial is, is going to be your tangent line approximation at that point. And so if they ever ask for what's the tangent line approximation, you can just take out the first term or the first two terms, depending upon if it's an x or no x, and find out then uh, that that's the tangent line approximation, okay? So now you would do a similar type thing for, like I said, sine of x, uh, cosine of x. No, I did, I did cosine. So sine of x, e to the x, and ln x. And you can drive it the same way in front of the class. I have some peer instruction problems in unit 7, and it just says drive this. This is what I'm trying to get at for, for that situation. And then you end up getting a pretty nice graph out of it as you continue to go. And in the graphs, there's also, there's all of these things. Uh, error, <clears throat> you can do the error for the Lagrange from that. Why don't I just do that one? And so my cosine graph, this is the cosine graph here. So I can play the A. That's not exactly what I wanted to do but I could play the K. And so you can, I, I start to class sometimes by just having this on the board when kids walk in and they go, oh, what's that? Now this is also nice because this does talk about the Lagrange error here. And so if I have enough terms, I don't have any error. But if I don't have enough terms, now I'm going to introduce some error. And that's what happens here. If I drag this along, and this is actually the wrong picture that I want to use for this. I get a different one that works. Um, but this will tell us what the Lagrange error bound locks things in at. And this is kind of nice to play with and talk to students about. Why this is wrong is because this point right here should actually be on the estimate because you do a plus or minus off the estimate to guarantee where the actual curve is. So this is on the wrong graph. I have another Lagrange one here. This one should be better where it should be in the right spot. So this is on the estimate. And then the plus and minus makes sure and guarantees that we have the actual curve inside that. OK? I hope this helps you. Uh, it's not thorough on how to drive all the other ones, but it does give you an idea of how I go about getting polynomials for some of these uh, sine and cosine functions. All right, thank you. I hope this helps.